This may look like a Fiat 500, but actually it's not at all. It's an Abarth 500, and as you can see from the Abarth badge here, it has a sting in its tail. Now what happens is Abarth goes to the Fiat factory, takes the 500 off their production line, and takes it to its own factory, and turns it into something a little bit mental. Arbath is to Fiat what AMG is to Mercedes. Effectively, it's the Italian firm's performance arm. They turn normal cars into nutty cars by tuning their engines and their chassis. Also, they give them a serious makeover so they look the part too. Normal Fiat 500s are quite cute looking cars, but the Arbath is a whole lot meaner. They've given it deep front bumper, got some sporty alloys there. There's the obligatory side skirts, of course, down the side. There's various Scorpion badges about the place. This car's the 595, and we'll come back to that in a moment. Obviously, we've got a spoiler at the back here. And on this particular model, we've got one, two, three, four exhausts, which seems like a little bit of overkill on a car of this size, but as you'll find out in a bit, they sound pretty good. Inside, the Arbath gets more Scorpion badges and a leather sports steering wheel, while standard kit includes a USB for the stereo, parking sensors and Bluetooth. Move to the top of the range model and you also get Xenon headlamps, Sabelt bucket seats and metal pedals and gear shifter. Now, are you paying attention because I'm going to talk you through the Arbath 500's range and it's a little bit confusing. Now the entry car is the Arbath 500 and that has a 1.4 litre turbo engine with 135 horsepower and will do 0 to 60 in 7.9 seconds. Then there's the Arbath 595 which is what this car is. It has a 160 horsepower engine, 1.4 litre turbo again and it will do 0 to 60 in 7.4 seconds. Then there are some really rare limited edition versions called the 695s, which are special Ferrari and Maserati models, and they have a 1.4 litre turbo engine with 180 horsepower, but they cost around 30 grand. So then, what does the Arbath 500 feel like to drive? Well, when you've got it on boost, it might be small, this engine. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, you know, it goes like stink. This is the 595, so it's the 160 horsepower model. And believe me, yeah, you don't need to pay extra for the 180 horsepower version. Thankfully, with so much performance in such a little car, there's plenty of safety kit. You're protected by seven airbags, including one for the driver's knee, electronic anti-skid control, and a system which breaks the inside wheel slightly in corners to help pull you around. And that brings us on to the handling. Now, the Arbath is different to the normal Fiat 500 because it has beefed up suspension, it's lower and it's got bigger brakes. But the 595 improves on that further with Kony Sport suspension, so it's even firmer the ride is. And you also get some vented front discs and they're bigger as well, so you've got even more stopping power than the normal Arbath 500. This particular car is the Competizione version of the 595 and that adds these body-hugging bucket seats which hold in place when you're hurtling around corners which you will be doing, you're definitely going to be hurtling around corners in this car. And you get a four-pipe Monza exhaust, which sounds like that. And you know, it all adds to the experience of driving this car. And let me tell you, on a twisty road like this, it's definitely a good experience. However, on other roads, the Arbath can often be a bad experience because unlike with the well-rounded Peugeot 208 GTI, the very things which make it such fun also make it massively frustrating. You know what, as a daily driver, this car could be pretty annoying. For instance, there's the, the suspension. On the normal car, it's very firm, and on this 595 with the Coney Springs, it's unnecessarily firm. The slightest bump in the road is transmitted into the cabin and you end up kind of bouncing your way down the road and yeah, that gets tiring after a while. You hope that you can you know, soften the suspension maybe by turning the sports mode off, but it doesn't affect the suspension. All it does is make the steering feel unnecessarily light and the, the throttle response all soggy. Speaking of which, yes, this engine's powerful, but that's only when you've got it in the power band. And when you change gears sometimes, it drops out of that power band and you've got loads of turbo lag. And you, in fact, you could write your last will and testament in the time it takes for the, there we go, car to get on boost and take off. 
There's some other problems as well with it, and that's the seating position. You sit quite high for a sporty car. In fact, because it's such a small car, you actually feel like you're driving a child's toy. And then there's the price, because there's nothing childish about the price. This particular model, this is almost £20,000, and it's a lot for a car that feels, well, about half that in terms of the material quality. Speaking of which, this turbo boost gauge there, it seems like some afterthought. It's just been plonked on the dash. I don't like the fact that the, well, the, the pedal box is really, really cramped, so you, there's not much room for your feet and the pedals, and you can't actually alter the steering wheel for reach either, so I'd ideally like to be sat like that, but I can't, so my position is compromised. And then there's the build quality. You see, yes, this is an Abarth, but it's still a Fiat, and Fiat came in the bottom two of the 2013 Driver Power Owner Satisfaction Survey, and you can rate your car at Driver Power .co.uk. As for space in the back, passengers will need to take care not to break their knees on the hard backs of the bucket seats or bang their heads on the low roof. And being small also means that despite the pumped up body kit, to some people the Arbar 500 still looks a little bit girly compared to the more manly Ford Fiesta ST. Speaking of which, there's not much room in the boot for more than some moderate clothes shopping and your favourite bag. Okay, so the Abarth 500 has lots of flaws, but it also has lots of personality. And as they say, personality goes a long way. But before you buy one of these things, you should definitely check out our reviews of some of its rivals, such as the Peugeot 208 GTI by clicking up here, or the Ford Fiesta ST by clicking down there. And as ever, don't forget to click on our logo to subscribe to the Carbuy YouTube channel, and every week we'll send you a new video review.